Hello everyone and welcome back to Parkitect and welcome back to Discovery Mountain, my Six Flags Park. So a bit more positive today. I managed to get construction anarchy working again by unsubscribing and resubscribing to it. It was as simple as that. Um, back to normal sort of FPS and that meant that I could continue doing the work that I wanted to do on the Asian area here. So, my first thought was I decided I'm going to build a rapids ride underneath the log flume because I want some sort of water ride running underneath it around the mountain. Um, and after playing about a bit with a couple of different layouts, it really wasn't working out for me, so I decided to scrap that idea. And I ended up going for a log flume, which is exactly what. Magic Mountain does with Ninja and Log Flume underneath it. I originally didn't want to do that in this episode. Uh, or, sorry, in this part. Basically because the last two or three parks that I've done, uh, sandbox parks that I've done, have all had Log Flumes in. And I'm just, I don't want to build the same things every time. But it, it was just, it was the only thing that fitted in nicely here because um, obviously you can build it up and down the hill whereas a rapids tends to be more flat um, so yeah this is what we ended up with um, with the layout sort of going in and out of the ghost track and then under, under the ground for a bit as well um, the layout only took about 5 minutes to complete so that is basically it like you can see there um, quite a long layout for a log flume because obviously there was quite a lot of space that it needed to fill um, but it gets some good interaction with the suspended coaster as well there so yeah all in all uh, that worked out pretty well um, first thing I did then was just to add the rock work around the tunnel entrances because the ones the in game tunnel entrances are hideous so it's always good to cover them up when you can and then we moved on to the foliage I believe and oh you'll notice as well that I deleted all the bright red trees I had someone in the comments for the last uh, episode where I was working on Ninja say the trees are a bit too bright and looking back to be honest they are um, so although we've, we've kept a few of the pink sakura trees because um, they fit in well with the theme but yeah the, the bright red ones are gone now um, and I do think it makes the area look a bit more realistic um, I will say now this theming is a lot heavier than what you'd actually see in a Six Flags Park for the log flume station and what I put next to it but I don't care <laughs> I wanted them in the park, so I put them in. Um, basically, I like doing my theming. And although we are going for realism as well here, I just think this looked too good, and I went for aesthetics over realism um, on this occasion. So, yeah, the first thing I put in is some stepping stones which was a bit of a random sort of idea, just using the border pieces, just to give a little bit of detail to the hillside here and make it look a bit more interesting. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually done anywhere in Asia in particular, but it just sort of fitted the theme in my head anyway. Um, and then I sort of had to work out the queue for the log flume because there wasn't really a lot of room here so we end up with quite a short queue that literally just goes underground underneath the station and back out to the pathway and that's when I start working on the station itself and for this station I went for the Japanese tea house sort of idea uh, well not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be Japanese but um, any sort of tea house really um, I just googled Japanese tea house used the 
image of Google to copy it from and did the best uh, what I could with it with the in-game pieces and all in all I think the log flume station come out looking pretty good it's definitely got that Asian feel to it that I was looking for and it just sort of makes this top of the hillside look complete so yeah I mean like I say with this theming you, you wouldn't have theming this heavy in a real Six Flags park but I'm having to do my own take on things do you know what I mean so sometimes I do get a bit carried away with it but that's that's just my building style really and the next park I do I'll make sure I do a park where I can do really heavy theming everywhere um, and yeah that being said though we still do have uh, quite a lot of realism in this park with all the backstage areas um, at some point I may need to add a backstage area for this log flume not exactly sure where I'm going to put it to be honest because the station sort of takes up all the room maybe somewhere behind the station behind a bit, the bit of track at the top there behind the station we could stick in a backstage area if we get a chance but yeah there's lots of little areas that I need to come back to in this park and do more work on um, I sort of I've got the the majority of things down now that I want in the park um, so it's going to just be a case of finishing off really there's still two, well there's still two two major themed areas that I'm going to put in and there's still a good few more coasters that are going to go in the park as well um, someone suggested in the comments the other day Batman the ride next please that is definitely going to be in the park at some point because it would not be a Six Flags park without a Batman clone <laughs> although I realise that it's probably going to end up being the third inverted coaster in the park so looking back now maybe I wouldn't have done the SLC but you know it doesn't really matter does it at the end of the day it's uh, I don't think the, the GP would be that bothered about it to be honest um, yeah, so that, like you can see here, the station's coming together quite nicely using the uh, the poles, I think, which are from the pirate pack, maybe, and just the fin pillars to do the sort of, you know, tea house structure effect, and then just using some better shapes for the circular windows there in the corners. Um, I had to shuffle the entrance and exits around a few times here to get the positioning of everything how I wanted it um, all of this did take quite a lot of playing about with because although it's a, quite a square building it uses a slightly more interesting roof structure um, to get it to look right so yeah it was, was quite a lot of playing about with but yeah, I think uh, this effect with, with the poles and the pillars really gives it that Asian feel, uh, which I'm pretty happy about, to be honest. Um, and yeah, not really a lot more to say on this building, just going to put the roof in, um, and that's pretty much it. And then there's another major scenery item. Oh, we've lost a bit of footage there, so obviously you can see the roof's gone in place. Um, it's a slightly overhanging roof, um, but obviously I, you could probably place that all on grid because the building itself is sort of one grid space in. But um, it's it was still a lot easier to build with construction anarchy. Um, I wouldn't have got it looking that good without using the mod. Here then I'm just putting in some custom lamp posts. Because I didn't think that the generic black ones sit, fitted the area that well. So I went for these sort of stone ones instead with the orb type lamp. And now 
we've actually got night mode working properly as well so at some point I'll go around the park and make sure that all the lighting good so that it can be viewed properly at night as well uh, which is good so I've noticed um, there's a lot of new mods on the workshop that have gone up for a fair few new rides and stuff which is pretty cool so I'm going to take a look at them uh, when I get a chance um, always good to see new content for this game I mean we're, hopefully we get a new DLC at some point I mean the last one came out maybe November or December last year so you know but I understand the development team is pretty small for this game similar to how the original RCTs were made it's just like two or three people working on it um, so you know we can't expect them to come out with DLCs at the rate Frontier do but still it'd be great to see like a big new uh, expansion for the game like, like the brilliant Taste of Adventure one um, no idea what they would come up with next to be honest but I know, I've noticed that they have asked um, the, the, the public sort of well the players what they'd like to see implemented into the game so you know it's great that they're asking for feedback like that and then looking at ways that maybe they can get some of them suggestions into the game yeah, it makes it feel sort of really interactive in a way back to what we're building then um, at this point I put in the pagoda which I was convinced that I needed construction anarchy for probably again probably could have built it without using it but it made it much easier um, just mainly because of these overhanging roofs um, for this one I did this time decide to go for the Asia mod pack roofs rather than building my own out of borders because one it keeps the piece count down and two it just looks a lot better for this uh, pagoda structure so that's what I went for. I put a few more stepping stones in here just because it needed a door and it needed somewhere. So, like, it needed visually uh, a way that people could actually get to it even though it's not going to be accessible to guests from a gameplay point of view. So, yeah, I put a, a door in there. And then for the windows, it's just the fin pillars, but painted different colour this time. We go for a sort of darker green, sort of turquoise-ish colour. And then just filling in the floor there with a textured path cover as well. And yeah, I mean, there's not an awful lot to say about Pagoda, really. It's They're pretty simple to make. Once you've, I've done these before in a couple of the campaign uh, parks that I played. Um, to start with, I didn't make it overhang enough. You can see there that I put that as a blueprint and it just doesn't look right. Um, the roofs really are quite overhanging on these. Like You want to go at least point to like half a grid space, if not a whole grid space. So yeah, like I say, you probably could do it without using the Anarchy mod. But yeah, it's just basically a case of um, building it up. It's gonna, always going to be the same on every floor with these sort of structures. And yeah, all in all, um, I think it goes together really well with the rest of the theme. Like I say, it's way more expensive than what Six Flags would put in for a theming item into their parks. But I just had to build it. It was in my head and I had to put it in there. This is the heaviest themed area of the park. You know, none of the other areas have this much theming. Um, this would be the bit that they put their money into. Do you know what I mean? If it was a real park. And yeah, it's it's definitely my favourite area of the park. It's been my favourite area to build. Um, and it's got me inspired to finish off this park, really. Like I say, there's two more themed areas to go. Won't give anything away, but 
you can sort of guess by me saying Batman the Ride will be going in soon. Um, yeah, pretty standard stuff for a Six Flags Park, really. But, yeah, all in all, really, uh, really successful, successful uh, building the game today. So that's pretty much it for this one. I'll show you a few shots of the log flume. We're not going to do it on ride because it's always a bit too long with these log flumes. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. See you later.